O oh, grace abounding that has made me fit to fix my eyes on the eternal light until my vision was consumed in it. I saw within its depth how it conceives all things in a single volume bound by love of which the universe is scattered leaves. In our last episode about healing, we mentioned something called the cycle of synthesis, and it seemed appropriate that we jump right into that next. This wisdom comes from Master Ganesh Baba and was published by his student Keith Lowenstein, MD, and derives down from the same lineage of masters who taught Paramahansa Yogananda, all the way from Mahavatar Babaji. Now, there's a lot we could say about these guys, but for the moment, all I'll say is that if you go down this rabbit hole, you won't be disappointed. But with that, let's play the intro. Hey, really quick. On April 1st, we are hosting a once in a lifetime event, the seven day transformation deluxe. Over the course of one week, you have the opportunity to completely transform your life in a radical and transcendent new way. If you're ready for something new in your life, please come and sign up before the event begins. You'll also get access to a library of bonus workshops immediately that you can get started with to start building up the energy. You'll find the link in the description and I'll see you on April 1st. To get started in understanding the cycle of synthesis, there are two things we must first understand. The essential idea of the word yoga and the meaning of U3. <laughs> no, not U3, but I mean, U3 are amazing. Seriously, where would I be without the three of you? But no, no, not U3, but U3, ultimate universal unity, which can also be identified as cosmic consciousness or simply consciousness with a capital C or spirit with a capital S. Traditionally, this same concept has been known as God, although today many find that term to be a bit outdated. We could also just as easily relate this same thing with divine, absolute, and infinite, all starting with capital letters. And this is just a baseline starting point for us here. You know, like old Hermes says, the imperfect and impermanent cannot easily apprehend the eternally perfected. But hey, we're doing our best. And that brings us to the next idea, the basic concept of yoga. The word yoga means union and refers to the union of the body, mind, and spirit. There are ways to establish this union. And within the domain of yoga, there are a variety of techniques and philosophies to follow based on what suits a person best. Most people in the average American world are only familiar with one type of yoga, which is the body movement form called Hatha. However, there are many different types of yoga, such as Raja, Karma, Kundalini, Inanna, and Kriya. Kriya has been of a particular interest to me personally because this is the type that was taught by Yogananda and generally is described as a very powerful means of cultivating union with the divine within us. Now, I guarantee that we'll do a lot more videos on yoga in the future, but for right now, I think we have what we need to move on to the cycle of synthesis itself. The cycle of synthesis can be understood as a two-dimensional model upon which we may hang an eight-dimensional lived experience of reality. It shows how all things emerge from the ultimate universal unity and descends through various stages of quantum energetic information to manifest the multiplicity of creation, which then intelligently begins to return back to the place of origin. You might find this quite aligned with what Lao Tzu said in the Tao. The Tao created oneness, oneness created twoness, twoness created threeness, threeness created all things. From a scientific perspective, the moment of creation here at the top would be the beginning and would also coincide with the opening lines of Genesis. In the beginning, God created. Well, you know the story. The four fields described here are named the inertial gravitational field, the electromagnetic field, the biopsychic field, and the intelloconscious field. And they represent the physical, physiological, psychological, and spiritual aspects of the human experience. These fields are modeled after the electromagnetic spectrum, which includes light, electricity, and the wireless communication we use in our daily lives. In order to make sense of these fields a bit more, let's have a closer look at electromagnetism. The way it works is that the flow of the electron is the current, the electricity, that manifests the magnetic field around it. Turn off the current and the field is gone also. On the other hand, the movement of a magnet or a magnetic field can also cause an electrical current to manifest. So electricity and magnetism go hand in hand. One produces the other, so to speak and together they depict a relationship between opposites that parallels the same dynamic that we find between the hemispheres of the brain and the quantum wave particle duality. This idea of the relationship between the current 
and the field is repeated with these other three fields in the cycle of synthesis. So for instance, the life force current would produce the field of the mind and a field of mind would likewise create a life force current. We can then extrapolate this to all of the other planes expressed through the cycle of synthesis. Now, the left side of the cycle depicts creation, cosmic consciousness coming into matter, while the right side represents the evolution of matter returning to cosmic consciousness by way of developing through life and at the highest stages through human life. The creation side of the cycle has eight categories that attempts to describe and categorize the human experience. This represents the domains of human existence that do not require our awareness of them in order to exist. At the same time, does anything exist without awareness? The basic idea then is that without awareness, these are simply the potential categories of human experience and with awareness, they manifest in consciousness as our actual human experience. These categories are consciousness, intelligence, mind, life, time, space, energy, and finally, matter. And so this is the act of creation, bringing the material reality and every dimension into existence. In the cycle of synthesis, the four lower categories, matter, energy, space, and time are those which make up the inertial gravitational and electromagnetic fields and represent the space-time continuum as understood by modern science today. As we move up the cycle, we come to the four upper categories, life, mind, intelligence, and consciousness which make up the biopsychic field and intelliconscious field and are the energies that we do not currently have the technology to yet measure. These upper two energetic fields are beyond what is considered part of the four dimensional space-time continuum, which is why the cycle is separated here in the middle with the dotted line representing the linear interface of time as the bottom portion is limited by the linear process and flow of time and the upper half is beyond time or trans time dimensional and thus is an experience that we can only measure with our human biopsychic instrument, our felt experience. The evolution side of the cycle of synthesis demonstrates movement going upward from the most basic elements of matter, developing both inorganic and organic matter and chemistries, which then yields molecular biology, then amoeba, fish, mammal, then primate, homo erectus and homo sapien, each of which have access to greater levels of these fields as they evolve through them. At the highest level, we have what is described as the yogi, now, many will consider yogi to mean a Hindu monk or something like that, but yogi actually means one who practices yoga. And as we saw before, yoga means union with the divine. So for this reason, one could replace yogi here with say saint or devoted spiritualist, or even anyone seeking union with God. And it would all mean the same thing. The idea then is that when mere humans rise above their mortal nature to seek union with the divine, they reach a point of transcendence which brings them into a state of ascended mastery. This is also what has been said to have happened to Thoth and the Nicals of Atlantis, as we discussed in the original Spirit Science Human History movie. Through their pursuit of spiritual wisdom, they transcended mortality and became interdimensional beings who could move their physical bodies between dimensions. This is often described as the supreme goal for all of life, to strive for such transcendence and cosmic unity. One thing I love about the cycle of synthesis is that it completely demonstrates how creation and evolution are two sides of the same coin and really just perfectly fits together. So if anyone ever tries to argue that it's either one or the other, just show them this video. Anyways, as we know today, visual light is only a small fraction of the overall electromagnetic spectrum and depicts the behavior changes relative to frequency and wavelength, i.e. the frequency increases as the wavelength decreases thus changing the behavior of the energy from a radio wave to visible light to X-rays and so on. This pattern theoretically continues with the shift in energy and velocity from one field to the next. The two lowest fields, the inertial gravitational and electromagnetic are the most matter infused, while the higher biopsychic and intelliconscious fields are energetic without physical properties. It's well understood today that the photon, a quanta of energy in the electromagnetic field moves at the speed of light and propagates its energy with the properties of both a particle and wave. The theory proposed by the cycle of synthesis is that each field here also has its own unique corresponding quanta or packet of energy. The inertial gravitational field, theoretical quanta is referred to as a graviton. The biopsychic field has the bion and the intelliconscious field has the conchion. We could also include here the presence potentially of lifetrons, 
which are the particles associated with life force energy, as described by Master Sri Yukteswar. However, I'm not sure where the life charms would fit on this diagram, or perhaps they would be associated specifically with the conchion or the bion, because life charms are generally described to be primarily related to the astral body, and that is outside the scope of this conversation for today. But either way, as we observe these higher planes in the cycle of synthesis, the biopsychic and intelliconscious fields, we see an increase in the frequency, the energy of the specific quanta, and the speed of motion in each successive energy field. In this model, this culminates, or actually originates, in the intelliconscious field with the conchion, which is described as having infinite velocity, meaning that it is present at every point in space at every moment, therefore transcending both time and space. Perhaps a fair attempt at a definition of God from the standpoint of modern physics. The energies in these fields intermingle and influence each other. The intelliconscious field permeates all others with equal intensity, while the inertial gravitational field has the least effect on the upper fields. In the terms of modern physics, these higher field energies are ethereal, yet very real and experienced by many. It is through spiritual practices such as meditation and devotional practices such as the different types of yoga that we learn how to change our awareness until we open up our own consciousness into these higher fields, guiding us to the direct experience of U3. Doing so leaves us with long lasting changes in our neuronal networks, as well as in other energy fields, contributing to a greater sense of equanimity in life. A feeling of deep relaxation and embodied joy spills into the whole body and mind. And with time, one learns to modulate these energies within a moment's notice and is able to share altruistic love, intuition, and synchronicity in ways that were only previously experienced in fleeting moments. And with that, now you understand the cycle of synthesis. Honestly, I think if the world scientists were to consider this and discuss it and take it further in their labs, we'd probably propel humanity forward into a really divinely inspired and harmoniously interconnected world very quickly. Do you know any scientists? Can you send this video to them? Most of the material here today comes from the book, Kriya Yoga for Self-Discovery, published by Dr. Keith Lowenstein, MD, who was a student of Ganesh Baba. It's definitely worth a read. And with that, once more, it seems it's about time for me to peace out for now. Thanks for watching again and sharing this video around. And I'll see you again soon for something more of the same and also completely different. Toodles.